Hello and welcome back to the Chassis Variant Series again with myself, Critical Rockets. We're on to the Charlie version of the Stormcrow here. Uh, now, the background for this one is pretty um, fluff based because the actual loadout of this mech is a large pulse, two medium pulse, and an LV10. It's a pretty nice low heat build. Um, but the background lore wise for it is that it has the most accurate weapons available to the clans. Uh, which doesn't mean much because obviously even on tabletop you're literally just rolling dice and hey if you rolled you hit hey well done uh, the weapons gave no bonus to accuracy the one thing pulse lasers did that was different from uh, MWO and, and tabletop as there are many differences but uh, pulse lasers basically allowed you to um, do more damage on the spot the idea was that because the laser pulsed it was uh, it would fire at a shorter range, but it would do more damage because it, it would more rapidly uh, hit that area. And that was literally it. I mean, MWO uh, have it in this that they fire a bit quicker and they do more damage instead. Uh, whereas uh, on tabletop, you you just you could fire the weapon every round, every turn that you could basically, as long as you could manage the heat. Uh, Full enough, LB10s worked a bit like LRMs because they had spread damage, so you'd roll it and then you would. Um, you determine where how many of the fragments hit, and then you would roll on the hit table where the, each fragment went. And then, if it was an exposed location, you would then have bonus rolls to your crit, uh, critical locations. And MW have tried to copy that with the idea that LBs have a higher uh, chance of causing internal criticals uh, when you shoot those areas, which is why LBs should be saved for when you, you know, obviously blow off. Uh, blow off the armor off the mech and then you shoot them with the LBs and the legs pop a lot easier, the arm blows off a lot easier. Uh, which is why LB is very good against lights. And uh, the Stormcrow Charlie is a yeah perfectly viable little design. It's it's not going to light the world on fire, uh, although I still really like it because uh, at medium ranges it's stunningly good. It doesn't overheat anytime soon. The left and right uh, torsos have the medium pulses and the high mounted energy hard points so if you did want to rejigger them you've got a nice little kind of uh, peek and shoot uh, sniping kind of uh, setup there. Um, the LB and the large pulse are in the arms which with the Stormcrow are a bit low mounted so you do have to be aware of that but uh, the rest of it's solid gold. There's plenty of ammunition in there for the Stormcrow's LB that you can fire enough that you don't have to worry about your ammunition running out anytime soon and as I said the heat generation is quite manageable even firing the large pulse and the medium pulses together you can get quite a few uh, salvos out before you're running the red line on your mech um, so yeah it's, it's pretty damn good now going back to my previous discussion about uh, Grim Plexus this was one of those matches where you're on the other side of the map and I can't help but feel that maybe Grim is, is possibly a little unbalanced I don't know it just feels like so if you start on a specific side of the map, you already have an advantage over your opponent. I'm not 100% sure about whether this is true, whether this is just madness on my part. It just seem it feels that way. I don't know whether this this plateau section that that you know the the enemy team are up on might actually be something of a little bit of a trap where they run into it, but then they they think they have cover, but in reality they have a very flat area that they have to come to the edge to shoot us, so they have to look down but we get to look up and in Mecha Orion Lion looking up to shoot targets is a lot easier than looking down so I think it's yeah possibly a little bit of a little bit of a lie and uh, I found that when I start this side of the map more often than not I've had wins I start on the other side of the map like the enemy team have and I've lost so I don't know whether that's just inherent map about or whether it's just incredibly unlucky on my side probably unlucky I don't know just how it feels it's not that like Grimm's a bad map, I do quite like it. Uh, but, yeah, it it's, it's just seems to be one of those maps uh, for me. I guess other people have, have their own maps that seem a bit odd for them. Uh, as part of the match, it, it, was, a, it was a brutal beatdown. It was a kick in. Uh, the, the Warhawk got caught out of position very early on and he was just picked on the whole time. Uh, I think he was finally killed there by that Warhammer. Um, the rest of the team just they tried to sort of NASCAR around the back of us but by the time any of them got into a position to start doing some damage most of their guys had been killed and as such this was a relatively short match uh, so as such the Stormcrow Charlie has obviously far less hard points but its stock loadout is actually quite manageable it's quite good 
Uh, if you did want to drop the large pulse for like another medium pulse and give yourself more ammo, or maybe upgrade the the, the weapon to uh, something like an LB20, possibly. If if that can fit in the arm, it might be able to. I'm not sure. Pro probably not. Uh, I might just be talking out my ass on that one, but. It, however you want to rejigger the ballistics, uh, you can do, and I, I think you could do wonders with this mech. Uh, hard point wise though, outside of possibly the two side torso energy ones for the sniping, it's not an essential purchase, but it's still quite good. It's still like my Stormcrow, so... Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's much left of the match, but I'll, uh, I'll leave you with, uh, with the dying embers of this one. And I uh, hope you all have a good week, thank you for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye! Destroyed. New target acquired. Target destroyed.